Hi everyone, I'm Ginger Johnson. I'm the author of The Splintered Light, which is a middle grade novel about the creation of color. We're going to talk about setting, but first we have to talk about characters. Characters can take many different forms and have many different faces, but they have to do something. They need to solve some kind of problem in order for a story to exist. In solving that problem, your character might be called upon to climb a rocky cliff, ride a Ferris wheel, take a bus through the city, or watch someone make potato chips with a drill. All of these actions involve a place, a setting. They don't happen in a vacuum or a black hole. Let's talk for a second about what setting does. Um, setting provides the backdrop to a story. It also helps to create a mood. Um, think about a story that you've read that um, if you took it out of the setting, would it have the same impact? Would Harry Potter be the same story if it did not take place in a castle way up north in the British Isles? Mm, probably not. It would be a very different story, say, if it took place in Tahiti. See what I mean? It's a backdrop to the story. So setting gives context to a story. You can think about a, a location, say a city, and you might think about a character who is in love for the first time. What are those elements that that character would notice about the city? Perhaps the character would notice of spring flowers or puffy clouds. If you have a somebody, for example, who's having a really bad day, the setting of that city setting might involve cracks in the sidewalk, and garbage and graffiti on the walls or um, shadows or something like that. So you can see how the setting really can add to an atmosphere or a mood of a story. So some of the things to, to think about in terms of setting is the time. So we said setting has time and um, place. You can think about what time of year, um, what time of day, what season it's in. Um, think about if this is happening in the present or in the past or perhaps in the future. Then in terms of time, you also have the age of the character. In terms of place, you can think about the immediate surroundings that the character is in, the room, the building, the city, the state, the country even. Think about the, the greater environment like a beach or a forest or a mountaintop. So what I want you to do now, I'm gonna show you a series of pictures and I want you to look at the details in these pictures. And I want you to write a list of 10 things about this picture. So you choose one picture and then write a list of 10 things that you notice in that picture that is specific to that setting. To give you an example of how this is done, if I were to do this and I chose this picture, this is what I would look at and these are the things that I would list. One, there's a pool. Two, it's filled with water. Three, there are fences in the background. Four, there are water plants. Five, there are tubs on the right side. Six, there are these grassy plants in the tub. Seven, looks like there's a sign in the pool on the left-hand side in the back. Eight, there are trees in the background. Nine, there's also a building back there. And 10, looks like there's a platform right in the middle. So there's my list. Now it's your turn. So look at these photos. When you find one that interests you, pause the video, study the details in the picture, then write down those details as if you're creating that world in words. When you're finished with your list, restart the video.
I want you to come up with a list of, of 20 things now, of things that you've noticed. Your first 10, and now the second set of 10. Now I want you to dig a little deeper. I want you to notice the floor, the walls, the ceiling. I want you to notice um, the sky, the ground, the trees, the plants. Get as specific as you possibly can, and then we'll come back and do some more. Okay, so if I were to do this, here's my picture again. Number 11, there is a wooden slat floor. 12, their pools are rectangular. 13, they're made out of concrete. 14, there's a cloudy sky from what I can see. 15, I think the plants are water lilies. 16, the concrete edges on the pools are broken. 17, there's water dripping out of the pots. 18, the sky is reflected in the pot. 19, there's yellow and green in the grass. And 20, there are small puddles of water on the boards. Okay, I'm going to show the pictures again. When you come to your picture, pause the video so you can study the details. Once you're done with your list, start the video again. How did that go? So you've got 20 things now. Now I want you to go one step farther. You've been depending upon the sense of sight as you've been looking at these pictures. Now I want you to dig into your other senses and put yourself in the environment of this picture. I want you to write what you might smell. I want you to write what you might hear. I want you to write what you might taste, and I want you to write what you might feel in this place. And that can be whether uh, literally feeling something with your hands, um, like the bark of a tree or something of that nature, but I also want you to write what you feel inside, what sort of emotion that you have when you're in this place. So those are the five different things I want you to do this time. What you smell, what you might hear, what you might taste, and what you might feel, both with your hands and with your emotions. And once you're done with that, then we have one final thing to do. Okay, so here's my picture again, if I were doing this. What I might smell could be mildew. There's an awful lot of water around, so maybe mildew or mold. Uh, something that I would hear, possibly a bird or the sound of the water lapping against the edges of the pool. Taste maybe a, a, a green dampness. Touch um, the rough concrete of the pool. And the emotion, honestly, I think that it would be kind of creepy there. Not every photo will have clear and obvious sensory things, so you'll need to use your imagination. So here are the photos again. Pause the video when you come to the picture you're working on. When you're finished with your sensory list, restart the video and we'll meet again at the end.
that you have that information, what I would like you to do now is to put it into a story. And that story can be either something that you're already working on. It can be something new that you're starting, like perhaps you have started with um, one of the writing prompts that is on this YouTube channel. Or you can just do something uh, entirely new. But I want you to use this setting and I want you to put a story into it. I want you to envision a character in this place that you have and I want you to envision that character with a problem in that place. And the problem can stem from that environment, from that setting, or it can just be something entirely different that just happens to be in that place. But I'd like you to, to envision a story happening there. So you have your, your elements, the things that you've noticed about one of these photographs that I've given you. You have details, you have sensory details, and now hopefully you'll have a story to go along with it. I hope you enjoy this. Have fun, keep reading, keep writing, and stay tuned. If you're interested in a book whose characters actually create settings, check out The Splintered Light, available in both hardcover and ebook formats.